For those of you who may still be scrolling their Facebook timeline from time to time, you may have noticed something different lately that many marketers are using to their advantage. Normally when using the social network, you expect to see your friends pretending their children are special or your aunt Doris still arguing about the results of the 2016 elections. But a new kind of content has taken the platform by storm, taking advantage of the older generation's gullibility to generate tons of clicks and engagement for free. You know, at my age, the mind starts playing tricks. So, ah! So let's dive into this interesting, but kind of dystopian trend. If you spend any time trawling the depths of Reddit and Google knows you do, then you'll have inevitably come across a high number of posts that people have made about some of the weirdest AI images getting traction on Facebook. It's almost impossible now to scroll your Facebook feed and not run across some kind of odd AI generated image being passed off as real. And looking at the comments, it's also very unclear if a lot of these replies are bots or just not very loquacious people, but they do really think these are a good idea. In a recent story by the Daily Beast, they explore this topic quite a bit and they've come to the same realization that Redditors have. These AI images on Facebook get a lot of traction because people think they're real. In the article, Daily Beast interviewed cognitive neuroscientist Bjorn Herman from the University of Toronto who studies the impact of aging on communication. Herman made a number of fascinating observations around the fact that older people don't have as much experience in seeing AI generated images and so they're not aware of what to look for like the extra fingers on people or the weird handles on teacups. He also pointed out that tech companies like Facebook and Google aren't really doing a lot of testing on older users, so they're likely missing this kind of issue as they're rolling out new features. But let's focus on Facebook for a minute because the situation is pretty interesting for online marketers. Facebook's demographics tend to skew a little bit older and unquestionably they're higher value because the audience tends to have more disposable income. This makes them a prime target for sometimes unscrupulous marketers. And Facebook presents itself as the place to stay in touch with friends and family easily. So psychologically, people tend to have their guard a little bit down more when they're browsing Facebook. Think about it, when you're looking at pictures from Uncle Eddie's recent fishing trip or your cousin Jane's twin boys, as you scroll through your feed, a picture of a fruit stand in India that looks like the face of Jesus may not make your spidey senses tingle. So in simple terms, you can get away with a lot of shit on Facebook because people aren't expecting it. But why are people doing this? Why are people setting up pages and posting these weird AI images? That's actually an easy one. We already covered it. Facebook's audience tends to be older, so they're worth more. So if you can drive traffic off of Facebook to your website, you're likely to get higher ad rates. In our interview with Anne Moss last year, we talked about how she's used Facebook pages to drive traffic to her website. RPM is higher for Facebook. In some niches, we get better RPM from Pinterest traffic, but both Pinterest and Facebook are usually higher than Google traffic. With Google increasingly becoming an unreliable traffic source for small sites, publishers are turning to alternative forms of traffic like Facebook and Pinterest. And the other thing that Facebook has going for it is it's actually pretty cheap to buy traffic from. If you set up a Facebook page and create posts that link back to your website, you can promote those individual Facebook page posts and buy page likes, which increase the likelihood you'll end up in people's news feeds in the future. And when you can acquire page likes via Facebook ads for under five cents a like, it becomes easier to see a potential ROI here. In an email newsletter that Hasib a leak from Strevio shared with his list earlier this week, he showed how he earned over $16,000 in revenue in the last 30 days with just a $4,000 investment in this strategy. Again, it's a pretty simple formula. Create viral style content on a website, create Facebook posts using AI images, use paid boosts to get page likes or even promote the posts themselves, and then hope there's a bit of algorithmic virality to get your posts seen more widely and build up an audience for the page that over time will ideally begin to generate organic views of future page posts. If you used Facebook at all recently, you'll have seen the above formula play out in real time right in front of you. And even if you haven't noticed it, you will now. The strategy is working and AI makes it a lot easier to accomplish. AI can help you generate the high volume of content that's needed for your website to make this work. You can also use AI to summarize the content and create short, sharp clickbait posts 
to use on Facebook. Tools like Midjourney or Dali can create the AI images based off of the content that you use in the posts themselves. It's cheap and relatively easy. The key though lies in choosing the right niche and crafting ideas that are engaging enough to potentially go viral here. Niche selection and understanding virality do take some skill though. And if you get this wrong, then you could find yourself wasting a lot of money on Facebook ads. But is this really sustainable? Well, maybe not. We're already starting to see Google cracking down on lower quality AI generated content created at scale. The sheer volume of it has overloaded their capacity to crawl and index at all, really. For years, Facebook convinced page owners to buy fans, which in turn ensured that their content reached the potential audience's eyes. Then in 2013, literally overnight, organic reach on Facebook page posts on the platform fell by as much as 95%. HCU ain't looking so bad now, eh? Facebook decided that person-to-person -person communication was the lifeblood of the platform, and that's what people wanted to see in their newsfeed. So everyone who spent time and money building up page likes got screwed. This happened again in 2018 and 2020 with groups. Facebook actually has a bit of a history here of convincing people to invest in ads and buy audience mass, and then rug pulls the organic reach away as some tactics become either too popular for their taste or deteriorate the platform experience. And with many publishers now turning to Facebook as a replacement for recently lost Google traffic, the problem has become even more obvious to Facebook. So does that mean you should ignore Facebook traffic? Of course not. Facebook's a great source of traffic, and particularly if you can make paid traffic work. We use Facebook a lot, Authority Hacker. It's one of our higher ROI channels, but we're not building fan pages, we're selling info products. So we treat this fan page to website traffic system the same way AI content has worked on Google for the past year and a half. Before that big rug pull a few weeks ago when a ton of AI sites got completely de-indexed. Use it to grow traffic, but don't just make a quick buck with ads. Capture people's emails, or better yet, sell them something so that when Facebook inevitably shuts it down, you still have a marketable audience and you build a long lasting asset from a short lived but very effective traffic source. So are you plotting your own Facebook traffic heist using images with six fingered three legged children baking sourdough bread? Or do you just wanna like travel photos that your friend Belinda posted last week? Let us know in the comments. We're keen to hear what you're doing on Facebook or what you're doing to diversify your traffic more broadly. And speaking of likes, why not drop down and smash the like and subscribe buttons so that the YouTube algorithms learns that we're an essential part of your viewing experience. We'd really appreciate it. If you like this video, you'll like this video.